What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video and we're continuing our Gaming On series with mobile phones. Now phones are things that most of us carry around with us every day and with a lot of new models out there supporting much higher storage technologies, not to mention a super fast USB-C interface, a lot of these guys are actually sort of rivaling what you would consider as a traditional storage device. And after thinking about it for a bit and actually having a viewer point out why not test phones in terms of gaming, I did definitely want to give it a go. And after receiving recently my Huawei Mate 10 Pro with 120 gigs worth of storage, I definitely knew that this test had to be done. So today, let's go ahead and test whether you can play computer games on your mobile phone. Now, with that being said, games can already be played on a phone. You can download them from the Play Store and that kind of stuff. But what if you want to play full-fledged desktop applications? Well, let's go ahead and get into that. Now, you might actually think just plug the phone into a USB port and run some games but actually it's not exactly that easy. For the most part, mobile phones actually don't connect to computers in the same way that traditional hard drives do, so some game clients, and not to mention some benchmarking applications, won't see the phone as a usable target. Thankfully, with that being said, I did manage to get a workaround working so that Steam would run it, although I think some native versions of Steam will work, but don't quote me on that one. It did work with my install of Steam and a couple other games out there, so that was totally fine for me. However, with that being said, my general benchmarking tool being Crystal Disk Mark, wouldn't work. It would not see the drive on the actual phone. Thanks to the fact that a lot of phones like this actually sit inside of what is essentially kind of like a wrapper that doesn't allow you to access this drive and the drive doesn't have a drive letter for it. Again, that's why that some applications don't work with it because technically speaking, there's no drive letter assigned to the volume of this drive. And another problem that we would actually run into is the actual USB-C interface. A lot of phones out there do run USB-C, but they're not full spec speed. They're just running standard USB 2. The Nexus 6P was a great example of this. I remember I made a video saying how great it was to have USB 3.1 Type-C on this guy and then later found out in the comment section that it was running in USB 2.0 speeds. However, with that being said, we'll get on this in just a moment, Huawei didn't touch on that. Otherwise, running phones and games are actually a little bit more harder than you may actually think. Now, as I did mention today, we are looking at the Mate 10 Pro from Huawei to do our particular test. However, any other phone featuring a USB-C interface should be able to achieve very similar speeds. Again, I do want to point out that not all USB-C interfaces are created equal, but thankfully according to GSM Arena, our USB 3.0 interface is 3.1 Type-C version 1, meaning we're not getting the full massive bandwidth of USB Type-C or USB 3.1 in general, but it is still going to be running at at least USB 3 interface speeds. Now, also to want to note, if your phone is based off the Apple Lightning connector or a micro USB interface, I'm sorry, you're running USB 2.0 technology which is a major downside. Now don't get me wrong, you can still easily run games on USB 2, but you're just going to be waiting a lot longer to load stuff. And in games such as GTA 5 and other open world experiences, you may experience some stuttering, but again, we'll focus on our USB 3.0 devices. So let's do some testing. First up, we need to grab ourselves some synthetics. Again, our synthetic testing software, Crystal Discmark, doesn't see this phone. So I downloaded an app on the phone and oh snap, that is a really fast read and write speeds. With read speeds faster than my internal SSD on my desktop and write speeds that rival decent SSDs out there, this guy's internal storage is no slouch. Now this is thanks to the fact that a lot of phone manufacturers are treating the onboard storage more like SSDs rather than just more like flash chips that are soldered onto these guys. Apple was one of the first companies to actually implement an NVMe-like interface inside of their phones for rapidly fast storage. This was done around the iPhone 6 time to get that really fast and snappy performance without the need of super high-end and super fast processors, and thus, this translates to a really good gaming experience. Also too, just as a quick little side note, I was actually able to win the benchmarking top spot with this phone, even though I've done nothing to it, I just downloaded the app, ran it, and turns out my phone is now at the top of their benchmarking utility. Now, also too on top of this, we needed to make sure that our computer could take advantage of these full speeds. At the time of actually doing these benchmarks, I wasn't fully sure that this USB-C interface was full USB 3 speeds, but lucky enough, after running some tests, I did find out, thankfully, it is full speed. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to just copy a file over and see what Windows was reporting as a speed as we get this 
kind of a window which says it's going to take three hours even though it took five minutes so the speed is totally off but I did calculate that once I did copy over 10 gigs of files and calculate the speed and time and all that kind of stuff it does work out to be around 120 megabytes per second sustained writes to the phone and about 150 megabytes per second sustained reads from the phone when using a Dell XPS 15 with a NVMe SSD through the USB-C 3.1 device so overall in terms of the actual uh, connection we're not seeing a bottleneck here which is another major plus sure 150 on the reads isn't as fast as what we saw inside this phone but let's face it 150 is going to be perfect for a lot of games out there and seeing that my hard drives I use to run my own games don't even hit 150 we're going to be expecting some pretty good speeds. And take a look at those numbers, the 150 by 120 megabytes per second do definitely line up with that USB 3.1, 3.0 type of technology, so we are getting full throughput here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start running some games. And damn, I was really blown away from this. Honestly, I didn't think a phone could actually deliver the speed needed to have a really good gaming experience. In fact, this phone was able to outpace a lot of my hard drive based gaming systems and that was a a little bit disappointing to see but it was also too really awesome to see that phone could beat out a mechanical hard drive looking through all these tests in terms of load time and also to in terms of FPS which we didn't see much of a difference because FPS is not affected by our drive speed overall it was a really good experience and take a look at some footage right here we don't see any drop frames any stuttering or we don't see excessive load times which is good to see especially in the benchmarking side and also to gaming side meaning that games were definitely responsive and we should have have a good experience. In fact, the experience that we did end up having was more comparable to a mid to high end SSD than an external desktop drive, so I was really impressed about that. Jumping over to the pro application side, I also too saw the exact same experience. With video editing totally possible off this guy and overall a really good experience the phone delivered on giving a good gaming and also too a good pro application experience. In fact, this video you're watching right now will be stored completely on this phone, edited from this phone and rendered to this phone and as long as you're seeing this I had absolutely no problems and if I suddenly cut in and say that I do have problems then I did have problems but well obviously I haven't cut in yet so there is been no problems. Battery life was also to another thing that I was a little bit concerned about as we're going to be hitting this phone relatively hard I thought we may see some slight uh, battery discharging but there was absolutely no problems, charge was able to go through as well, we're charging the phone up as we're using it. So at the end of a gaming session, not only did I have a fun time playing games, but my phone was also too charged. Now whilst gaming on your phone may be actually a pretty good thing, there are definitely some major drawbacks for this kind of setup. First and foremost, we do need to be using the internal storage of our phone. So if you're thinking of just grabbing a micro SD card, ramping up to 128, 256 gigs of storage on that card and then running some really good numbers, Unfortunately, this won't necessarily be the case, as again, the speed is coming through the fast flash storage inside of our phones. Now, yes, a lot of SD cards these days are getting much faster and you can be getting a lot better experience, but for the most part, the internal storage that's soldered into the actual device is going to usually be a lot faster. Again, depending on your phone, depending on your specifications, and depending on the SD card, this may be different, but your SD card can sometimes be the bottleneck in this kind of process. Also, do phones with larger storage usually costs much more than phones that don't have a lot of storage. So setting up this kind of an option with a lot of storage may be a very costly thing. Sure, you're going to get a phone with a lot of storage, but at the same time, you shouldn't necessarily be buying a high capacity phone just to get some extra storage to play some games on. And finally, if you are going to be doing this, you're going to be adding a lot more reads and writes to the flash memory inside of the phone, killing it faster. Now, yes, you can easily live out the contract that your phone was based on. You could probably get at least three, four, or even five years out of this guy but just know if you are planning to keep the phone until it dies using it a lot as a gaming drive or a scratch drive if you are doing other things can lead to a faster death in some situations when it comes to the flash memory all in all though using your phone as a gaming drive on the go is definitely possible and like all of our tests if it is a situation between having no games and having some games definitely a phone isn't a too bad option but using a phone as an external drive is really not the best as it adds a lot more reads and writes to the actual onboard storage, thus killing it faster, but also too, in terms of the price point, again, pulling up our price per gigabyte chart, 
it isn't doing us any favours when it comes to how much we're actually paying for storage. And not to mention, buying an external hard drive with one, two, three terabytes is really easy, whereas finding a phone that has one, two, or three terabytes of internal storage is basically unheard of here in 2018. Not to mention, a lot of phones out there again here in 2018 don't exactly feature a whole bunch of speed when it comes to the connector involved. Sure, a lot of them out there have USB 3, but there's still a lot of manufacturers out there making USB-C interfaces, but don't don't actually have the USB 3.1 or 3.0 protocol running in the background to give us this faster speed. Again, a lot of them, about 90 plus percent, are still using the older USB 2 standard, which is not going to be giving us as fast speed. But is it possible to play games? Definitely it is possible, and the experience wasn't bad, especially if you have a modern phone with a lot of storage and a fast interface. But should you do it? Absolutely not. It doesn't make much sense. Again, in the price department, the performance department, to the price department, everything just doesn't make sense. But yes, it is totally possible. But with that being said, if you want to check out the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, I do have a video coming down the line. If you want to pick it up, I'll leave it linked down below. If you want to check out my other gaming on series, again, link down below, and I'll leave a hard drive that I would probably recommend grabbing versus an actual phone for your gaming setup. Again, links all down below. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in that comment section what kind of a weird storage setup do you run? Again, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.